Let's consider uniform circular motion again. Turns out that this has a lot to do with simple harmonic motion. So let's take, we've got some particle, and it is going around and around a circle at a constant speed of v, constantly changing direction, um, at a radius of r. Now, I'm going to say that the um, angular position of this particle is theta. That is, as it goes around the circle, theta gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, we're just going to assume that r stays the same. I'm also going to assume that that velocity is the same all the way around, okay? Which means, and I'm going to write this over here, that um, the angular velocity, since it's a constant, I can just put as theta over t. So this is usually, we use this for average. The average angular velocity is the, um, well, the change, sorry the change of theta over t, okay? Um, well, that means that omega t equals its angular position now minus its initial angular position. Okay, just gonna load that, leave that over here for a second and let's go look at x and y. So this is its angular position, but what about its um, linear position, its, its coordinates? Well, right now in this picture, its coordinates are x and y. Its x is the one side of a right triangle right here with a hypotenuse of r and making an angle of theta here. So that means that its x coordinate is, well, this is the side adjacent to the angle, so that would be the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle, and y would be the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. Okie dokie. Now, I also need to realize that the r, well, r is as far as the particle can go either in x or y. See, the particle, let's see, basically the furthest it can go in y is when it's right here. And at that time, basically your coordinate in y would be the radius of the circle, or r. The furthest in x it can go is well, this is negative, but still, um, the largest magnitude in x it can go is right here. That is as far as radius, and it's as far as it can go. So really, r is your maximum coordinate for x and y. So I could rewrite this, and I'm going to do this over here. Well, okay, yeah. Um, I can rewrite this where r, r is x max, or the amplitude, the largest amplitude that it can have in x. Cosine, oops, ooh, I even said cosine, why did I write an s? Okay, now theta, theta, if I go back over here, theta would be omega t plus initial angle. See, I'm just, I'm just adding this to both sides. And I know what, I'm going to go one step third, further, initial angle, the angle at which something starts is called the phase angle. We've been calling it phi. So really, theta, the angular position, is the angular velocity times time plus phi, the initial angular position. So I can come back up here and say, well, if x is maximum times cosine of theta, where theta is omega t plus phi, then x is equal to xm cosine omega t plus phi. That looks awfully familiar. If I do the same thing for y, y equals, this time r is the maximum coordinate I can have for y, so it would be y max, but it's sine, okay? Theta is omega t plus phi again. That looks awfully familiar too. This looks a lot like simple harmonic motion, and in fact, that's what we're getting. Turns out that you can think of um, the x or y position of an object going around a uniform circle of motion as simple harmonic motion. It's kind of like if you took this circle and tipped it flat on the table and looked at it from, I don't know, the edge or something. So if I'm, I, I was looking at it from this way, 
That is a creepy eye. Okay, that's what I meant that to be. <clears throat> You're just looking at this. What you would see is this particle moving. I mean, I know it's doing this, but all you would see is it going, it's going up here, and then down here, and then back over there, and back over there, because you don't have any perception of distances this way. In fact, I have an animation of this that we've seen before. Here we go. Basically, this animation, what we have, here's your object going around in simple, or sorry, in uniform circular motion, and we are projecting its position in the Y onto a graph as a function of time, and this is what you get. It's the exact same as the simple harmonic motion of the Y position of, um, of a mass going up and down. I'm just going to stop this and do it by steps for a little, just a little bit. Okay. So really the thing on the right is just graphing the Y position of something. Sometimes we call this the projection of the motion onto the Y axis. And for simple harmonic, or sorry, for uniform circular motion, the projection of the motion onto the Y axis, in, for something moving in a, circle, uh, in a circle, looks like this. It's some amplitude times the sine of omega t plus some phase angle. Usually the phase angle is zero and we don't worry about it. Um, for x, you have the amplitude times the cosine times omega t plus the phase angle. So I know that there was a multiple choice question where they said that a particle was moving in such a way that its x and y could be um, shown as this. Sorry about the little jump there. I had to go and find it and open it up. So it says a particle moves in a circle in such a way that the x and y coordinates of motion are given in meters as functions of time as this. So we've got our x equals 5 cosine 3t and y equals 5 cosine sine t. So what they're saying here is that, okay, what they're saying here is that if this is for something moving in a circle, then I can assume that that 5 right there is the amplitude. So I'm saying that the radius of this circle, that's what I'm saying, we're doing, this is an example problem, we're saying, um, okay, I better write this down, if x equals cosine of 3t and y equals 5 sine of 3t, then what we're saying is that these should match this and x, or sorry, that means the amplitude, or r, of the circle, the radius of the circle, is 5 meters, okay? And notice both of these have 3t in them because both of these have omega t. That means, that means omega must be 3. So we're saying omega is 3. Okay, so then they want, what is the period of the revolution of the, of the particle? Well, the period of revolution of the particle is... Let's see, well, period over, oh, sorry, I went the wrong way. Why did I do that? Omega is 2 pi over period. If I solve this for period, I end up with period equals, see, multiply by t, divide by omega, I get 2 pi over 3. Uh, that's c, okay? Then it says, which of the following is true of the speed of the particle? Well, if it's undergoing uniform circular motion, then the speed is constant. So it's either A or B. That's it, because all the other ones are talking about the speed changing. So is it A or B? Well, the 5 is the radius, not the speed. If I want speed, remember, linear speed is omega times R, so that's going to be 3 times 5. 15. Oop, wakey, wakey. Okay. That's, uh, it is always equal to 15 meters per second, so it's B. Notice, these problems should not be taking very long. These are your multiple choice problems. You're supposed to be able to do them in like one minute or less, and it's, it's all about recognizing that this is simple harmonic motion and yanking out, hey, the thing in front is the amplitude, and the thing attached to the T is the, is the angular velocity. And that's it.